Hello and welcome to the conversation in which I want to draw a picture, uh, make a video uh, for your consideration as to the practices of loving another and yourself and or yourself. Because the one thing you're not going to get back from your iPhone or your cell phone or your computer is loving touch or a loving practice. You can't really buy those. You can buy massages. You can, um, you can definitely buy massages and they're great. But does that person love you the way your partner loves you? Does that person need to put his or her love out to you to make a living? No, not really. So I want to impress upon you the many ways in which you can bring more love into your life, bring more love into your relationship, in addition to or as a prelude to being sexual. And so often in these days, and as I spoke of the of the uh, aging years, and I spoke of the, um, in the last conversation, the um, phases of sexuality. And some of us are in that phase of sexuality that we feel sexual, we are sexual, but we don't always get to the actual act of being sexual because there's not enough lead in, or there's not enough turn on, or there's not enough just naturally being in the mood, which is a result of libido. And there's so much to concern ourselves with these days. There's so much financial concern. There's war concern. There's pandemic concern. And it goes on and on and on. And fear is the biggest block to pleasure. Is if you're worrying and if you're in fear, you're probably not going to be able to open to pleasure or even think about much pleasure other than maybe getting off and releasing the tension that pleasure, that fear brings about in the body. Um, fear creates stress. Fear, it, there's a wonderful saying about fear that it is false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. And all of us get caught up in thoughts of fear, feelings of fear. So these practices that I'm sharing with you today, the first one I want to impress upon you is the amount of communication and invitation and emotion that you can transmit through your eyes. Now, the eyes also are for staring, but that is the last thing uh, that, that love practices would include, staring. Staring is this kind of blank gaze at someone. And I really want you to drop into what is gazing if you're gazing at the night sky, if you're gazing at a beautiful bird floating by against a blue sky, as I just did when I gazed out the window, or at the cumulus white clouds that are out in the sky today, I gaze at those as I gaze at you. And gazing has feeling behind it. Gazing is much deeper than staring. Probably you can, you can imagine that or just go to the mirror and stare at yourself and then drop into feelings of either love or appreciation or respect or something you just did recently that gave you uh, a, a real good feeling about yourself. And I want you to gaze with that good feeling at yourself in the mirror. That's a great way to practice. 
The best way to practice is to go to your significant other, whether it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, husband, wife, um, compañero. I love that word in Espanol for companion. Uh, so I go to my compañero and I lift his chin and I, away from the computer, and I invite him to receive my gaze of love. Just for a moment, you can go right back to that paragraph or to that video you're watching or that movie, but please receive my gaze for a moment and feel loved. I might say those words if he doesn't know to think them, and he may not. You can practice that with your kids. I just take one look at your favorite pet lying there next to you, hoping, hoping that you will gaze at him or her. Animals love to gaze. And you'll probably notice that they don't look away so quickly, that they will just stay there with you and gaze right back. Maybe they will blink, but keep gazing. And your heart will open. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think we have pets, is because our heart opens when we gaze with our cat or our dog and we, or we hold them close and we feel them breathing along with us. If only we could do more of that with the people we love. So this conversation will continue to invite you into ways to practice loving in addition to or instead of or along with good sex. To be. Another important area that is too often overlooked in loving practice that can be and really should be initiated uh, between you couples or your love, you as lovers uh, or with your kids. This is not about sex. This could become sex with the right person, but it's all about touch and our tremendous need for feeling the quality of touch by another. How, how does it feel when a warm hand lands on your shoulder? and begins to caress, or lightly caress, or around your neck, or even lifting your hair just a little. And when my partner comes and touches me, I'm suddenly not interested in my phone nearly as much as I was. And um, you will find this to be true with your partner as well. Lift a foot out of take the sock off if his or her shoes are off in the house and begin to rub their feet. Heat up some lotion or oil oh, only for like five seconds in the microwave. So there's a warmth to the oil or lotion. Um, could be olive oil, could be coconut oil. And pick up a foot, put it on a towel in your lap if you want and surprise your partner or your kids when they're locked into a movie, they might say, no, I don't want a foot massage now, but that's their right. But just start rubbing. Start giving the toes some rubbing and say, the bottoms of the feet, oh my God, if I, could, if I had a foot in my hand, I can do it with my hand. I love to rub my hands and I love to rub my feet and I love to rub my knees. And I tell you that because I have a lot of pain in my knees. And as you get a little bit older, you're gonna find that you might have a lot more pain in your knees too. And then you just reach down there and kind of knead them. <laughs> knead your knees, put some love into your knees with your thumbs, dig into those places that are starting to get a little arthritic. Um, touch, touch, touch each other more. You know, this last couple years and um, this thing called a pandemic and um, wearing masks and staying as far from another as possible, uh, even having little sections of the 
uh, and standing in line at the bank. You have to stand six feet apart and there was this social distancing that uh, I don't have to tell you, you've all probably experienced it in, in your own country, in your own cities and towns. And um, I, I'm still, I'm still in shock at what, at what they made us do and what they, the power, the powers that be that came in and separated us. And here I am making video after video about the value and the healing necessity of gazing and of touching. So if you really wanna blow your partner's mind and they're just waking up in the morning, reach for a little of that uh, warm oil that you slipped up and warmed up and just start massaging their back. Let's say they're laying on their side and their back is towards you. Let them wake up to 10 minutes. Okay, five minutes if that's all you've got to some back rub or neck rub and um, give their body and heart and soul the message that they are loved. Because the words I love you don't come close to the feeling in the body of being loved. And love is my message. Uh, love is my assignment in life to understand it in partnership and to understand it as I love myself and as I love my work, and as I put my love out to you and present myself and present my ideas and present my thoughts so that you can have more love in your life. Because as I said, our wonderful devices, our Macs and our, <laughs> Our, yeah, our devices, our computers, and our phones are not going to love us. And so we become deprived of an essential ingredient to the human condition, to human life. And you, many of you have pets and animals and cats and dogs and birds, and how much love do they get? Probably more than your partner. Probably there's more petting to the yipping, barking dog when you come in the house or your cat that goes into a big cat stretch when you land on the couch. That animal, that dear beloved animal is devoted to you because you feed it. <laughs> it's devoted to you because you pet it. And your partners, your husbands, your wives, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, don't always and don't often get the same attention. So I'm really big on touching and I know the value. If I'm not getting it, I give it to myself. And I criticize my aging sun damaged skin, but I still put love into it and lots of lotion and uh, rich oils. And I do put a lot of love into myself, which is part of the reason that I can get here in front of the camera and pour it out to you, to inspire you, to excite you, to remind you of the next opportunity to love someone you love. So where will all this touching lead? It actually might lead to the bedroom, if you are lovers, and it might not. Time will be a consideration. Uh, even in the mood will be a consideration. Uh, in this um, third phase of my life, I find that I'm attracting some couples uh, who are in their third decade of their marriage or in that third phase of aging sex and looking for help. And um, I think about it myself and what kind of help can I be for them? What kind of, what kind of suggestions and ideas in a, in a three-day immersion, for instance, uh, in two hours of time with me, how can I help them and guide them 
uh, so that when I leave the room that we are doing the session in uh, and they are alone, they can move into the practices of sexual loving even if it's not the kind of sex they used to have when they were younger. And that's a big complaint. Uh, well, we used to want to have sex all the time. And the guy would say, and I was always ready and always had an erection. And, and now she looks down at me and I have expectations that I, I, I should have one and it's not there. And um, we're just lost. We don't know what to do. So I'm going to be using my own information that I'm giving to you to um, remind them of many ways in which they can, because we don't, which they can play with each other. Because we, we come into our lives figuring out sex, that's not really that difficult. Our bodies are designed for it. And then we go into these phases of life when we have career and kids and then we're too busy or too tired. And now we go into, some of us, to the last phase, let's say the aging phase of loving each other and sexing with each other or not sexing with each other. Sometimes I suggest that you leave your clothes on and go through the motions, lying down in your bed where you're comfortable, of being sexual slow motion. If more couples could let go of the need for an erection, the need for a juicy vagina, the need for penetration and insertion, because sometimes it just isn't gonna happen, and go through the motions, leave your clothes on, and, and roll around with each other, and, and laugh about your stiff knees, and one of you get on top and take turns with the other getting on top and how much of the eye gazing connection can you still have while you're lumbering <laughs> up on the bed on knees that don't work so well and hips that have gotten stiff and low back pain because you've been at the computer too many hours and it goes on and on and on, the realities of life. So I'm passionate about addressing uh, people who are not young and jumping into sexo, as they call it here in Panama, uh, in the Spanish language, sex is sexo, which is very cute. And there's a lot of young people in cities like I'm in. And you can tell they're their sexo is, happens really easy for all of these beautiful young people. The guys are in great shape, the women are gorgeous, and the women are really into being women, and the men are really into being men, and somewhat machismo, machismo. Um, still somewhat, even if they do have one primary partner, they uh, always are thinking of other partners, and often have them anyway. Uh, and there's no need for communication about all that. The women almost know what's going to happen if it's a wife or a girlfriend. So it's a whole cultural thing that I'm uh, adapting to here. And my partner and I talk about these things. Uh, do you have any interest in being with another woman or do I have any interest in being with another man? And we have really lively conversations about, well, to this degree I do, and he will say, well, to this degree, I do. And what's happened is both of us are in the same place about it, not wanting to include sexo, but both of us looking to have friends who are of the uh, complementary sex. I would like, I have girlfriends, but I would love a Latin male friend who is lively and finds me fun and a great friend to be with and have conversations with and help help each other with Spanish and English and talk about what it's like for him and his life here uh, in a, a, a Central American country and uh, ask me questions about the tantric life or what my life has been or is now and have a, a male Latin friend. I would really love that. And uh, my partner feels the same about women friends who he could 
He's much more intellectual than me, but he would love women that he can, that he can could have a dinner with or have great conversations with who, where there's a flirtatious energy. But as he honestly says, I really don't want to be sexual with another woman, Carol, another woman, Caroline. You're more than enough for me. And there's a comfort in hearing that. So if you're with a partner and you haven't had those conversations, try it out because it's, it's enlivening. It might lead you to the bedroom. It might be a conversation you can have part way through your sexual encounter, whatever that may be. But don't forget that you're there to love each other. You're there to love each other with your bodies. And it doesn't have to look like it did when you were 20 or 30. Let it look like it does now but let it happen. Thank you for listening to this conversation. Much more to be continued.